The brazen invasion of the Ukrainian armed forces into Russia's Kursk region is being called a fatal blow to Putin's long rule in Ukraine. The Times writes, recalling the sinking of the Russian nuclear submarine Kursk exactly 24 years ago during the dictator's first year in power. It is noted that Ukraine's operation in Russia made Putin the first Russian leader since World War II to cede territory to a foreign army. The timing of the Ukrainian offensive is also ominous for Putin. In Russia, August has historically been a month of catastrophe and upheaval, beginning with the failed 1991 coup against Mikhail Gorbachev by KGB hardliners. Since then, in addition to the Kursk submarine disaster, August has seen major terrorist attacks, natural disasters and a devastating financial crisis. With more than two weeks to go, Putin must be wondering whether he will become the latest victim of the August curse, the article says. However, it is claimed that some analysts believe that Russians may believe that Putin was right when he argued that war was necessary to prevent a preemptive attack by Kyiv and its NATO allies. Also, Alexander Gabuev, head of the Carnegie Russia Eurasia think tank, said, while the Ukrainian invasion is a humiliation for Putin, it is unlikely to have any long-term consequences for his stay in power unless the situation worsens. At the same time, the publication indicates that if Ukraine is able to seize the Kursk region, it will most likely try to exchange part of the captured lands for territories under Russian control. However, Putin does not seem to be in the mood for discussions with Kiev. Moreover, as noted, although the outcome of the Ukrainian offensive is still unclear, it is almost certain that the dictator has already begun planning his revenge. Ukrainian Air Force Aviation has conducted its first airstrike on Russian positions in the Kursk region using a fighter jet, reports Forbes. It is reported that a Ukrainian Su-27 fighter jet struck a Russian command post in the village of Tetkino, located a few kilometers north of the front line. Notably, the attack was carried out by a Soviet-era fighter rather than the F-16s recently acquired by Ukraine. Forbes notes that the first videos appeared showing Ukrainian aircraft dropping American JDAM bombs on targets in the Kursk region. According to Forbes, Ukrainian forces have deployed a significant number of air defense batteries as well as electronic warfare systems capable of jamming radio signals and in some cases guiding precision bombs. With a big assist from explosive drones, the Ukrainian batteries have shot down several Russian helicopters. Firing back, Russian artillery damaged one Ukrainian Buck air defense vehicle, Forbes adds. Forbes reports that Russian air defenses around Kursk are also very formidable. This explains why the mentioned Su-27 was observed flying only a few hundred feet above the battlefield after releasing glide bombs. Pilots on both sides are attempting to fly as low and as frequently as possible to avoid detection by enemy radars. While both sides have deployed military aircraft over the invasion zone, Russia may be deploying more military aircraft. There is evidence of Russian bombings targeting both Ukrainian forces in the Kursk region and Ukrainian bases in the Sumy region. The only confirmed target of a Ukrainian bomb is that Russian command post in Tetkino. That is to say, it's not clear the Ukrainians have extended their air power directly over the front line, Forbes notes. According to Forbes, such actions would make sense. Despite the escalation of Ukrainian drone and missile strikes on Russian airbases in and around Kursk, the Russians still have a larger number of aircraft and bombs. The 85 F-16 fighters promised by Ukraine's European allies are arriving slowly and in small numbers. Hans Petter Midtun, a non-resident fellow at the Center for Defense Strategies, noted that it is quite possible the Ukrainian Air Force now has only around 100 combat aircraft after losing several during Russian attacks on Ukrainian airbases this summer. According to him, the invasion will challenge the already stretched Ukrainian armed forces. Before the full-scale invasion, Russia prepared about 300 aircraft for air attacks against Ukraine capable of dropping up to 100 glide bombs per day. In contrast, the Ukrainian Air Force is likely dropping only a fraction of that number. It's worth noting that around the same time Su-27s were bombing Russian positions in Kursk, other Ukrainian jets were bombing three Russian-held towns in the Kharkiv region around 100 miles east of the Kursk salient, Forbes reports. 
However, despite the severe shortage of aircraft, bombs and other heavy weaponry, Forbes notes that Ukraine's invasion shows no signs of slowing down. We are on the offensive. The aim is to stretch the positions of the enemy, to inflict maximum losses and to destabilize the situation in Russia as they are unable to protect their own border, an unnamed Ukrainian official told Midtun.